Gravity Falls and Journal 3 belong to Alex Hurst and Disney Channel. Please go support Gravity Falls and go buy Journal 3. Hello everybody, Raspberry Barrel here again for another Gravity Falls video. Where we'll be reading Journal 3, of course. And our last chapter was all about ghosts and Ford struggling that he's been trying so long to find his unified theory of weirdness but still hasn't found it yet. And now we are getting into what I think is definitely a great plot chapter. It's all plot of course but this one it's one of my favorites. So let's just begin. Please forgive me if I stutter, hesitate, or mispronounce anything and for any noises in the background. Let's go. My muse has spoken. I awake after the longest slumber of my life with renewed energy and inspiration. My muse, that strange whimsical creature who speaks to me in my dreams, has returned to me at last, this time with an insight so brilliant it can only be described as divine intervention. All this time I've been looking for some common behavior to connect these anomalies, but what if what they all share is their history, a history that exists beyond our world, in another realm or dimension of weirdness. What if these various different creatures all leaked from their dimension into ours, and the leak is right here in Gravity Falls? If I could locate the puncture, this weak dimensional fiber, and record proof of the dimension beyond, I would have my grand unified theory of weirdness. It is an idea so pure and powerful, I never could have thought of it on my own. Sometimes I cannot believe how lucky I am to have come across my blessed muse. How many other great historical minds has his brilliance inspired? Is he even real or just a part of my fickle imagination? No matter, his insight is surely real, as are the blueprints he left me for a portal to another dimension. Weirdness dimension, tear our dimension. Gnome goes in, comes out of ours. The purest in me wants to build the machine from scratch, but given my time and financial constraints, it does not seem feasible. I will need to borrow certain elements from the resources I have turned to, turned to in years past for my more ambitious projects. A triangular superstructure will best absorb the operating forces. The center lens requires an alloy made of cobalt titanium and molybdenum. Secret code right here, it says. I'll get this puppy up and running one day, and neither Time Baby nor the big frilly know-it-all will stop me. And of course, that's from Bill. Seismic readings indicate that the crash site Omega is still geologically stable enough for the removal of large amounts of material. But if my initial calculations are correct, then I may need to remove whole pieces of machinery and damage the actual hull. Further study is needed before I shall proceed. I must not lose my nerve. The instructions to power this will be far too dangerous to put in one place. I may need to separate them throughout my journals to be safe. The enormity of this task begins to overwhelm me. July 18th. The design of the machine has hit a roadblock. My own embarrassingly limited mechanical knowledge. Why did I stop taking hyper-advanced engineering and fifth dimensional calculus after only three semesters? For what? To treat myself to that second semester of applied quantum phase theory? Well, this is where all my slacking off has landed me. I have to I have no choice. I must call up my old classmate and beg him to join me. He is the only person I trust enough to share in this undertaking. I must persuade him to harness his mechanical genius and service to this project, or else abandon my machine entirely. It has been a while since I've talked to another person. I should probably shower. July 20th. Success! He has agreed to join me. With his, with his assistance, I am confident we can complete the machine. He has already made several suggestions over the phone that I intend to incorporate into my revised design. July 20th. I am overcome with emotion. 
The sight of my old classmate upon my doorstep this morning filled my heart with such joy and gratitude. He has sacrificed so much to come to my aid. He has temporarily left his bride and their young son behind in California for the duration of this project. He has abandoned his own professional aspirations, although he has brought along a prototype of his pet project to fiddle with in his off hours. After all these years of self-imposed solitude, how wonderful it is to have a friend by my side. I must do my best to make him feel at home. I am off to the store for some banjo strings and microchips. A note for Bill, and we do have some of those blue letters to pay attention to. One peek into my dimension, and this bumpkin lost his weak little mind. All he saw was me removing my extra exoskeleton to feed. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen, Jack. My assistant. The past few days have been the most energizing I've had since I first came to this town. I don't think I realized just how isolated I'd become until F arrived, and his brilliant mind and amusing quirks have made this task infinitely more enjoyable. I've told him no banjo playing after eight. Not a fan of his chewing tobacco habit. He grew up on a hog farm, so I suppose old vices die hard. He even casually ham bones on his knees when he's counting in his head. I can put up with these quirks, but I told him if I ever see a pig in the house, I'm sending him back south. I double checked my equations. He quintuple checks. I often catch him staring at this photo of his, photo of his family back in Polo Alto. He's, he says thinking of his loved ones keeps him grounded. I have a similar picture on my desk of Nikola Tesla. He, he carries n new computing technology with him everywhere. He predicts in the future those disks will be ten times more floppy. Portable computer, his pet project. He's made one for me that has extra orange master keys for my extra fingers. Honestly, not sure why I would use this thing. It's just a heavy slow journal. I keep scrambling this Cubics cube when he's not looking, and he keeps solving it without hesitation. I think it would make him crazy to see it unsolved for more than two seconds. I'm thinking of modifying it to be unsolvable just to see the look on his face. Today, while reviewing our portal blueprints and debating the latest fashion trend of leg warmers, F asked me an odd question. He said that the plans in these blueprints were unbelievably complex, and he wondered if anyone else had helped me come up with this idea. I intentionally debated whether I should tell him about my muse. F is a very superstitious man, he crosses himself when he walks over graves, and chastises me for saying, unholy things. Although I have always wanted to tell someone about my divine experience, I worry that he might think I've gone mad all these years in seclusion, or worse, that I am tangled in some kind of unsavory black magic. No matter, I told him that with hard work everything is possible, and gave him a stack of calculations to quintuple check. Some secrets are best kept that way. Could F ever truly appreciate the complex fates that brought me and my muse together? And here is what our cipher wheel, one of our cipher wheels that helps us decode things. Codes, Caesar, Atbash, and A1Z26. First right here, this code that starts with the triangle is I call this 4Ds, and this is Bill's symbol substitution cipher. It occurs to me that if I must keep secrets from F, I might as well begin writing certain passages of this book in code. I aced cryptology in college, so this will be fun. At least for me, it'll be deeply tedious and annoying for someone trying to decipher it. It amuses me to think of their frustrating effort. Down here, another bill code with that blue letter. It says, the time you're wasting delights me. 10.37 AM, KBPS 4.6, Expedition. Today, F came to me in panic. I can tell he's agitated when his knees are bouncing and, to and today his KBS PC, knee bounced per second, was off the charts. He said that 
powering my portal design would require a temporal displacement hyperdrive and that by his calculations humanity wouldn't be able to invent one of those for another 10,000 years. Imagine his surprise when I told him I knew just where we could get such a device. I decided it was time to tell him about Crash Site Omega. I sat him down, told him his entire life was about to change, and delivered the news. Crash Site Omega. F's reaction did not disappoint. He was in such shock that he pulled out some of his hair. I do worry about his tendency toward anxiety. I may need to train him in my advanced forms of meditation in the future. When he finished wrapping his mind around the concept and pacing the length of the lab, he became very excited. Apparently, he's had an interest in the subject ever since his cousin, Thistlebert, claimed that his grandma was taken by them saucer people. Thistlebert did not have his cousin's intellect. So it's settled. We've decided to take a two-day hike up to the entrance of CSO to unearth the hyperdrive and use it to power our portal. I've already begun packing for the trip. Modified from tech previously found at CSO will be necessary to scramble security. Must be careful not to point at the sky. Don't want another drowned helicopter incident. Magnet gun. Compass. Pioneers thought Gravity Falls was haunted because their compasses went haywire the moment they entered the valley. I know better. Every compass in a 100 mile radius points to the crash site. Once it spins widely, you've reached the epicenter. Radiation gloves. It wasn't easy modifying these for the extra fingers. Jelly beans. My weakness. Always excited when I find a lumpy or strange one. Added them to the collection. Crossed out. The worst snack on earth is toffee peanuts. They stick to your teeth. Make a mess. Survival. We will be venturing into some dangerous parts of the uncharted forest. Brought curses and spells if need for them arises. Day one. There is nothing quite like a lungful of fresh Oregon air to set one's spirit skyward. We spent the morning hiking up the granite pass to the lake where my secret shortcut through the mountain is located. I remember in my youth I hated physical activity, but since my college years I've developed a rigorous daily physical and mental workout. I love Tesla, but if I look as emancipated as him when I'm in my 70s, shoot me with the death ray. If only my assistant had an exercise regimen like mine, only one morning and he's already winded. He took a breather around midday and could be heard grumbling about wanting to invent a, invent a pair of robot legs while he ate his sandwich. He even drew a diagram in the dirt with a stick. Robo legs. While he snacked, his breadcrumbs attracted a rather curious creature. Platypus. This bizarre red and black checkered beast waddled out of the bush unexpectedly for bits of F sandwich. He heard folklore of these creatures, the source of all lumberjacks jackets, but assured it was just a local legend. But assumed it was just a local legend, like the one clean truck stop bathroom. In fact, they are very real, and oddly enough, smell like maple syrup and bacon. A perfect flannel pattern coat covers its entire body. Young ones are rumored to start with horizontal stripes and only acquire vertical ones once they've reached maturity, highly sought after by the locals. It is said that a jacket made from the plat platypus's pelt is incredibly warm, impervious to mosquito bites, and goes in and out of fashion every ten years or so. I would not eat those eggs. Could the legend of the croc guile be true as well? Island head beast. Giant tooth. Is there a creature beneath the island? Yet another startling discovery of the, at the lake. One of these boulders was in fact an enormous human-like tooth. There was evidence of nerve tissue on the root, plus crushed mollusks, fish bones, and a broken wristwatch at the crown. My assistant used the chisel and some dental floss to break free a few pieces as I puzzled over a theory. One giant headache. 
In my past observations, I have noticed that one of the lake's islands seems to be in a different location every morning. My conclusion is that this island is some kind of living creature and the owner of the tooth. Could it be that this, this serene mountain lake contains a genuine submerged Lovecraftian horror? I will have to return to investigate at a later date. Despite this bone-chilling thought, I couldn't help but enjoy the scenery. There is no other place in Gravity Falls I would rather be than the lake. It reminds me of my childhood and Glass Shard Beach. And crossed at a boat. Now we've got some Caesar right here. I still recall that one summer Stanley and I hunted for the Jersey Devil in the Pine Barrens. Mom and Dad never believed that we really saw one. Secret Tunnel. Cave Hand Print. Behind Trembly Falls. We passed through the secret pass in the lake, a hidden tunnel behind Trembly Falls, and arrived right in the center of the mountain. The townsfolk seem wholly unaware of this system of ancient tunnels and caves, which appears to have been dug by a native populace before recorded history. Who or what they were hiding from remains a mystery, although their cave paintings may provide answers. Several hours of tunneling deep through the mountains and disaster struck. Our lantern went out. I knew we should have brought flashlights, but in my foolish nostalgia, I brought this worthless Civil War era piece of junk. Worst of all, we were in complete blackness and I couldn't restart it. Leave it to me to bring a magnet gun, but no matches. As my assistant and I were arguing about what to do, we discovered that a strange living mineral was watching us with glowing eyes. Several more pairs of glowing eyes appeared in the dark. Cave Paintings If these drawings are to be believed, the beasts that roamed ancient Gravity Falls were even stranger than the ones we see today. I believe we had discovered an entirely new classification of organism, geodities. These creatures resemble a living, a living geodes. They make high-pitched chirping and humming sounds and amble about on clinking crystal legs. When I picked one up, it sang a baby-pitched little song, attracting several more of these creatures who began inexplicably dancing around. Because they gave off a faint glow, I suggested to F that we try to gather them in a pile and use their light to lead us out of the tunnel. He had a better idea. He picked up two of them and banged them together, creating a spark that reignited our lantern. They all shrieked at the sight of the fire and scrambled away. One bit my finger and drew blood. Luckily, this spark was all we needed to survive this bizarre cavern and continue on our way. Favorite Constellations, Orion, Ursa Major, William. Finally, we reached the top of Gravity Falls Peak and made our camp for the night. As we stared up at Gravity Falls' beautiful and strange constellation patterns, we found ourselves discussing our future as if we were back in our old college dorm. F said that once our project was complete and he moved back to California, his dream was to become an independent inventor, patienting robotics, that would improve people's lives. Plus, after growing up dirt poor in Tennessee, he fantasized about making enough to afford a nice place with a screen door that wasn't broken. I could relate to his ambition. I discussed my dreams of proving my theory. I could finally leave Gravity Falls, return home to the East Coast, and publish my findings in the, to the world. I'd be the toast of the scientific community, rubbing elbows with presidents and prize winners, debating politics with Regan, and discussing turtlenecks fashion tips with Carl Sagan. Imagine the look on the Dean of West Coast Tech's face when he saw that the student he refused was now the next Einstein. Imagine how proud my family and hometown would be. The freak would return a hero. F seemed puzzled by the scope of my plans. I had already discovered so many amazing things and recorded them in the journals. Was this grand theory even necessary? Why not publish now? Settle down, maybe meet someone and start a family. I laughed at the thought. Romance was far more baffling to me than the greatest mysteries of the universe. 
and more importantly, once Gravity Falls is revealed to the world, it would surely create a weirdness rush of scientists flocking to the town. If I don't discover the theory first, surely one of them will, and my name would be lost to history books. It hasn't been an easy path, but I prefer the road less traveled anyway. Although, I confided in an F that I was grateful to be traveling with a friend. Beans. F's favorite eats them even when we're not camping. Always feel like the face is staring at me. And then, crossed out words. Trying to read it. It says, reminds me of camping with my brother. I wonder what he's up to. I awoke the next morning to the sound of screaming, which in Gravity Falls is more common than you might think. Apparently, F had been up early shaving. The speed of his facial hair growth is a mystery of its own. When he s spied something menacing standing behind his reflection in the creek, but when he turned around to smack the intruder with his banjo, it was gone. Strange things were always found in this hidden pass. I s surveyed the camp. I felt a hard tapping on my neck. I whipped around in panic, but found there was nothing there. An eerie gust of wind carried my gaze to an ancient moss-covered wooden sign on which was carved a strange poem. In the corner of your eye, a man appears to lean, but when you turn to meet his stare, he's nowhere to be seen. Hide your lumber, clutch your axe, and turn your lanterns out. Best to watch your back, my friends, the hide behinds about. I've heard enough lumberjack lore to know we were in the presence of the hide behind. Legends describe a being with an impossible ability to hide behind, to hide before it's seen. But what is he? A ghost? A living shadow? Or just a malnourished peeping Tom with a fear of eye contact? Is this peripheral phantom watching me right now? Never been seen. A strange howl echoed through the air as F and I packed up quickly and quietly and walked backwards out of camp. I told F to keep his shaving mirror handy to look back just in case. I might return to this camp one day once the hairs on my neck finally stand down. What a relief to be out of the forest. The wild spinning of my compass told me we had nearly reached our destination, but I saw something very strange when we got there. S sleepily munching on the grass was a herd of cattle with the strangest spot patterns I had ever seen. Cow circles. Is this a code, a language, or just some intergalactic teenager's idea of a prank? Circles, spirals, and designs of otherworldly mathematical precision coat them from horns to hooves. Eyes usually dilated, as if from staring at an intensely bright light. Does this mean what I think it means? The bucket of milk nearby seems to emit a low hum. I told F not to drink it. He did anyway can't take the farm out of him. Staring directly at them makes me oddly dizzy. One shoot on my book. Spit. From a distance, it appears that the patterns on these beasts were in some way linked. Could ar arrange the cows together reveal a giant message? Unfortunately, such investigations would have to wait as we had arrived at last at our destination. Crash site Omega. The site looked exactly the same as I had left it two years ago. Reverenced in Journal 2. With the ladder I had constructed leading down through the indefinite exhaust point, F was so excited when he saw it that he spit out the tainted milk. We descended into the abyss together. And that's where we'll be ending our reading for this week. Slash today. And we're getting into some of my favorite parts because we've been introduced introduced to F Ford's college buddy, which of course, more if you have watched the show, is McGucket. Little bird McGucket. <clears throat> so it was a very interesting chapter. We got some introduction and there is more weirdness to come. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you all next time. Gravity Falls belong and Jer Gravity Falls and Journal Three belongs to Alex Hirsch and Disney Channel. Please go support Gravity Falls and go buy Journal Three.